Okay, is that working? All right, let me get this to my wife, too. How y'all doing? You look good. Hey, man. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Thank you for everything. You keep me connected. I know. What's up, Bola? How you doing, baby? How you doing? I'm right. my baby. In Kansas, man. Good morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray with me. Lord Jesus, uh, settle us now into this moment of preaching so that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. Guide us, O oh God, in the way that we ought to go. Uh, teach us as we hear these words. Bless our hearts. Not that we would leave it all here, but that we would take it from this place and along the highways and byways of life, share it, oh God, your goodness with others that we meet along the way. Oh, how we love you. We love you. We love you, oh God. But it is so, so small compared to how you love us. Even while we were sinners, oh God, the scriptures remind us that you died for us, we the ungodly. You looked beyond our faults and you saw our needs. You brought us to this moment in time. And so, God, speak now to us. We are listening. Uh, bless a heart, change a mind, move a spirit toward you, so that in the end you would receive all glory. Edify us, we pray, and ask this now in Jesus' name. Oh, how we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow, let me just look at you. <laughs> Looking, Y'all look like good new money. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm in California. Do you know what that means? I'm in California. The exotic. The enlightened California. How many of y'all from down home? Anybody from down home? Yeah, I know y'all some transplants up in here. You really from down home, Emmanuel. You all the way from home. You are, that's right. You all the way from home. It is so good to be at the Village Baptist Church, where for me, uh, my genesis in this gospel ministry uh, literally began. Uh, the building is gone now. The, the ground stands there. Uh, but uh, long ago, when our dinosaurs ruled the earth, uh, we, came, we came west like Jed Clampett. I loaded all of my, my earthly belongings in my little car. A little silver Dodge coat, we called it Silver Street. And on I 40 in Winston Salem, North Carolina, on the 1st of February of 1978, I kissed my mama, shook my daddy's hand, and I moved west. Uh, I won't get into details, but I had to get out of North Carolina. <laughs> and I came as far west as I could. I came to the, I came to the ocean. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but here we found great joy and land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And uh, uh, as the pastor has mentioned, uh, what a great friend he has been uh, long before these children uh, were here. And our Frida sang across the hill at the Church of God. Amen. He had his eye on her. <laughs> I remember it well. Uh, uh, but long ago, we came here, and we were welcomed with great and open arms uh, by many of you who are here, and um, uh, some who have gone. I remember Marguerite Johnson and America Wells and, and, and Deacon Brooks. Lovely, Rev. Lovely, lovely, lovely. He'd say lovely. How lovely. And so many others. So it's good to be back where, for me, it all began. And I came from North Carolina in uh February of 78, uh, with the plan of gaining my seminary degree so that I could be an Army chaplain. That was my goal. That was my plan. That was my belief. Uh, but the Lord sent me here not for that, but to find a wife. Amen. And he who finds a wife, Maud, <laughs> finds a good thing. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, as I said in the church uh, earlier this morning, there were a lot of women in Village Baptist. 
And I was like, hmm. But it all fell to one place. Amen. And, uh, oh, oh, you moved. I'm sorry. You over there. Yeah. Not you, brother. I don't swing like that. I'm sorry. I love you, but not like that. Yeah, she moved on. Amen. Amen. But I thank you for you. You allowed me to take your daughter, a daughter of this land, from from here, and we branched out. And, and Emmanuel's right. We are brothers uh, in in many ways. And he is the brother that the Lord saw fit to keep at home. Amen. And I am the brother that the Lord sent out. And uh, over thirty. Uh, three years ago, I sat on pastor search committee for this church, and we made the decision uh, to select this young man from Africa. Uh, he was young, had a little bit more hair. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Amen. And had a Nova, a Chevy Nova. And we didn't hold that against you. <laughs> because you live near the church. We say, well, at least you can just walk to church. And you... <laughs> That knew it was pretty wrecked, jacked up. <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, but we remained brothers through the years, and uh, we saw our families develop, and uh, kind of in a strange way, they developed very similarly. Uh, a boy and a boy and a girl. And uh, we would come back for, this is Susan's home, and we'd come back uh, periodically to let the grandchildren see the grandparents and... Uh, uh, we would always fellowship, and so many times he would come to where we were uh, across uh, the land. So I just want to thank you, Pastor, for being a, a true brother and a friend indeed. Well, I'm not going to hold you long, although I am about to preach so I can hold you long. <laughs> they trained us at the seminary to hold you long. <laughs> I think I made a B-plus in that hold you long class. I can, I can stretch it out, Doc. I can stretch it out. But we won't hold you long. Um, thanks be to God, the heat won last night. <laughs> they did what they needed to do. And now it's on in Oklahoma, baby. It's on. <laughs> those young guys in Oklahoma are terrible. They something, man. It's going to be tough. Those, those, that Thunder is a tough team. But it's going to be good. Well, I tell you, God is so good. And I would ask you in your Bibles to look with us to the book of Hebrews. You know that book. Uh, if you've been here at Village for any time, you are uh, steeped in Christian education. Uh, this pastor will not allow you to be uh, spiritually illiterate. I've got notes from 30 years ago. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Where he taught uh, as a young pastor. And I know that through the years he has uh, fed you from this wonderful scripture. Uh, those familiar chapters there in 11 and 12, you know them. Uh, those great, powerful scriptures of faith and endurance and uh, direction. And that is where we want to give our attention to today. Hebrews is a grand book. It's a great book. It is a Amen. prolific book. Yes. Uh, I encourage it to your reading and your edification in your leisure real soon. Uh, it is uh, exquisite. It is practical. And it's thorough presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, the author does not pull any punches. He does not waste any time. He gets right to it. In the army, we say, bottom line up front, bluff. Bottom line up front, he comes right at you to talk about Jesus Christ. We stand and we pontificate. We argue back and forth. We go around and around in our deliberations in life. But it is really, my brothers, my sisters, all about Jesus. Amen. It is not about me. It is not about you. It is not about the choir. It is not about the president. It is not about the heat. 
or the thunder. It is about Jesus. Hey, sis. I love you. Who's that tall? Jack, stand up, baby. Stand up. She's tall. You. Stand up, girl. Oh, Lord. That's my daughter, Lord. Have mercy. I love you. It's, it's, it's just good to be home with family. It's, it's family here. Amen. But it's all about Jesus. If, if you have been in company with someone who has told you or has sought to persuade you that it is another issue, another point of importance, uh, you can dispute and uh, you can say, no, no, it is about Jesus. This book of Hebrews is not only uh, declares unambiguously that, that Jesus is better but it declares that Jesus is better than anyone and anything. I saw the fancy cars in the parking lot. He's better than those. <laughs> in your pockets and pocket books, there are keys to grand homes. Some sit on the hills here and in the great palatial views around Marin County. He's better than that. We're going to have a nice meal, I understand, real soon. So I'm going to hurry up. <laughs> but that meal will come and then it will be gone. We had Olive got the other night. Amen. That was pretty good. <laughs> Chicken masala <laughs> is gone. Jesus is better Amen. than that. You love your pastor, but Jesus is better than your pastor. Amen. My wife loves me, but I, Jesus is better than me. Jesus is better than anything and anybody. None of these temporary things that come for a little while and then waste away. I, when I was here before, I was young and strapping. Six-pack. <laughs> now I have keg. <laughs> it's like that. It's it like that. You know, it, things just happen. So these temporary things, this, this building is leaning. But Jesus is better. Magnificent, magnanimous, marvelous Jesus Christ. I said earlier that we sing it down home in the south. You don't sing it here. You put the words on the on the wall here down south. We we just had a wood floor and we stomp and said, "Can't nobody do me like Jesus." Can't y'all don't sing that out here? This. But can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Jesus is better than anything that we have. He's the first. He's the last. He's the beginning and the end. He is my all. My testimony is he's my all and all. And so the book of Hebrews, the author there, we don't know, maybe Paul, maybe someone else, de declares without hesitation, without equivocation, that Jesus is better. Hebrews is not only a dynamic book, uh, but Hebrews is also a practical book. Mm -hmm. It addresses not only the doctrine of the Christian life, but it addresses the duty of the Christian life. Much doctrine, uh, but we must be doers mm -hmm. of the word. Yeah. Now, in the remarkable 11th chapter, you know it well. You have been there. You have uh, tarried there. You have studied there. You have gained encouragement. We recall that uh, there's mention of ordinary citizens who maintain an extraordinary faith mm -hmm. and a God who is completely faithful. Yes. Uh, Hebrews 10 tells us that he who promised yes, is faithful. If you are wondering about that, if you're wavering somewhere, wondering, oh, Lord, why are you letting me down? He who promised is faithful. I tell you, he's faithful. I'm behind this pulpit after 30 years because he's faithful. I've got a wife that hadn't left me because he's faithful. Village Baptist, in spite of all the ins and outs, ups and downs, is here because God is faithful. Faithful. Yes, sir. Help me, Lord Jesus. Uh, 
So somehow without notoriety, much notoriety, without much fanfare, these great folk in the, the 11th chapter of Hebrews uh, trusted God in spite of and even in the midst of uh, the tribulations and the trials of life. And now they are listed. We, we say, we call this uh, 11th chapter the Hall of Faith. These names are listed. Abraham, who left his homeland and went to a land that he did not know. Uh, Sarah is there who followed him. And Isaac, who took his son up on, uh, uh, Abraham took this boy up on a mountain. And uh, uh, there was a ram in the bush, and Isaac escaped the sacrificial knife. Jacob is there, the deceiver, is in this chapter. Joseph, who went from the uh, uh, pig pen uh, to the palace and saved his people. He's in there. Moses stood at a burning bush, stuttering, saying, I don't know if I can do this. God said, do it. Rahab, the uh, harlot. They called her is there, but she found favor with God. Gideon, uh, he led 300 against thousands and thousands and thousands. God can do it. Barak is there, and, and Samson uh, had his eye for the ladies. Uh, he's in there, Jephthah and David and Samuel. Uh, the Bible says, these who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Mm. Every morning in Africa, Pastor, before the sun comes up, a gazelle awakes, and that gazelle knows that for that day, for that day, he must outrun the fastest lion, or else he will be captured and killed. Jonathan, every day in Africa, before the sun comes up, a lion awakes. And that lion knows, Pastor, that for that day, for that day, she must outrun the slowest gazelle. Or else she and her cubs will starve and die. And so, village, it really does not matter whether you are a gazelle or a lion, when the sun comes up, you'd better be running. <laughs> Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, yeah. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, yeah. the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him yeah. endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah. 
For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Amen. Let me talk for the next uh, hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> From the subject, the one word subject, run. Village, I've come from South Carolina. God's country. <laughs> Where it's hot. No, no fog rolling in across the hill. It's just hot. Amen. Lemonade and sweet tea. You know about that. Run. Run, village. Run, village. Run. If there was ever a time that we ought to run. The time is now. Yeah, yeah. Churches need to run, and and families need to run, and and children need to run, and parents need to run. We need to run. Christians need to run. Amen. Now is no time to linger on the sideline of life or to scurry aimlessly through life. It's time to run. Now is not the time to call a time out, but Josh, or to retreat and wait for the halftime show. It's time to run. And when we run, we ought to be passionate in our run. We, we ought to mean it. As I saw the praise team here and leading us through those marvelous, thank you, Frida, through those marvelous verses, uh, drawing us into the very presence of God, I, I felt the passion. The Spirit of God. And, and we ought to run like we ought, we ought to run with passion. Yes, sir. We ought to be passionate. J Maxwell, John Maxwell, uh, who has written so many books on leadership, uh, noted that the heroes in chapter 11 of Hebrews were uh, made it because they were passionate about their cause. What are you passionate about? You just you just come just yeah just punch the ticket. I'm in my I'm in this marriage, but you know it's just just doing what I gotta do. Just to, we ought to be passionate, yes, passionate, passionate, passionate as we run this race. Now the writer here describes our life as a race that we must run. It is set, he says, uh, before us. Life is not a beauty contest where we ought to stand and pose. Life is not a boxing match. Uh, Pacquiao got robbed. Uh, it's not a boxing match where we ought to be swinging and bobbing and weaving. No, 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 not that. Life is not a chess match, Jonathan, where we strategize and, and seek to outthink our opponent. Life is not a sleep study. Oh, we lay down and rest. No, 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 no. Life is a race where we need to run with passion. Passion, I say. Passion. We need more passion, but there's a key to passion. And the key, my brother and my sister, to passion is patience. A lot of folks getting in a hurry. A lot of folks want it right now. Want it my way. Drive, go through the drive through. <laughs> we 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 want to in a hurry. I want love, and I run it right now. Instant gratification. But 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 we need passion, and the key to passion is patience. Yes. For most of us, uh, Sister Cecil, uh, life is not a sprint. Look at some of the young ones in here. I know you're in a hurry. You're ready to go. You're ready to go. You're ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. But there are others in here that I've seen 30 years ago. And we can all testify <laughs> that life was not a sprint. Not what we thought it was going to be. Not in the fast lane. Not in the hammer down lane. But we were there just moving along methodically. So 
Sometimes we would sow as eagles, yes, but then we would run and we wouldn't get weary. But most of the time we would walk in. <laughs> Just doing the best we can. Life, life is not a sprint. Not about speed. Race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to him and he or her who endures all the way to the finish line. So I've come by the same village, run anyhow. Regardless of your situation, run. Regardless of your bank account, run. Regardless of your physical uh, uh, ability or disability, run. Regardless of the uh, handsomeness and unhandsomeness of your husband, <laughs> run. <laughs> run, run, I say. Find ourselves going through long days and even longer nights. Run anyhow. There will be some opposition along the way, but run. There will be some ups and downs, but run. Sometimes you may even want to give up. Throw in the towel. But run. There may be dangers. There will be dangers. There will be doors and snares in this life. Yes, sir. You will have a pocket full of money. No. In this life, Marge, you're going to get everything that you want. No. In this life, nobody's going to oppose you. Everybody's going to be on your side and pat you on the back. You, you'll win the, the prize. You'll beat the pastor every time. <laughs> In this life, no. In this life, you will have tribulations. You will have setbacks. You will have heartbreak. Somebody's going to break your heart. Leave you on the side of the curb bleeding. How could they do me like that? I was in love. Mm, mm, mm. All the wrong places. Run anyhow. Run with passion and run with Patience. Be patient. The key to passion is patience. The key to patience is purpose. You, you need some purpose. What you running for? Where, where you running to? Where you, where you going? Just, oh, just running. Running around the current. Where, where you going? You need some purpose. Run with passion. Run with patience. But you got to have some purpose. What you doing out here? Stay in your lane. Get out of my lane. Don't be turning to, turn to your neighbor. Don't turn to your neighbor. Leave your neighbor alone. Passion. Patience. Purpose. What is our purpose? We do not run aimlessly. We are not erratic. We are not helter-skelter. We are not unpredictable. We are not without direction. We run with a purpose. We have a guidebook. We have a map. I know my Redeemer lives. I know, I know, I know, I know my eyes is on Jesus. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher. purpose is Jesus. We're running to, we're running toward Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The current events of this world do not deter us. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. The political ins and outs do not distract us. No. 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 The $4 gas prices do not detain us. Yeah. Woo, something. <laughs> it's 309 in South Carolina. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there. I can't afford to be out here, man. I'm leaving in the morning. <laughs> I can't handle it, man. God, four dollars and thirty cents. Man. But the key to is to, the key to our running is passion. Run with passion. Run with patience. Slow down. key to patience is our purpose. We look into Jesus. We've got something worth running for. Many know about Jesus. Many sing about Jesus. Many talk about Jesus. There are uh, members of the ch there are churches around the nation that preach about Jesus. 
Many Bibles contain, the Bibles contain the words of Jesus. Stories about Jesus, but that's about as far as many of us get. We've heard about it. We've been to VBS or we've been to Sunday school, but we've not really made a commitment to the purpose. What makes life worth living? What makes you run when you don't want to run? What what makes you love the unlovable? It is our purpose. It is Jesus. 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 And so, to run, we must have patience, passion. The key to passion is patience. The key to patience is purpose, a reason, a goal, a direction. But we must have clarity in our purpose. And, and, and what gives us our clarity after we have our passion, our patience, and our purpose is our perspective. How do you see Jesus? Is he just a sugar daddy? Is he just something you call on? That you sing about? What is your perspective? What is your perspective? What is your motivation? My daddy sang a song. My dad was in quartet back in Carolina when I was a boy. Uh, he sang a song, said, I believe I'll run on and see what the end's going to be. And we've got to run, village, with passion, with patience, with purpose. Yes, and our perspective puts it all, clarifies it for us. And, and when we talk about perspective, there are three things that we need to consider. Uh, first of all, it says, uh, uh, Look to those who are the great cloud of witness. Consider the great cloud. Yes. Yes. All those great heroes of the faith. Consider them. This great cloud that have gone before us. We see their records. We see their accomplishments. We see how they made it through their trials and tribulations. And we, when we see this, we are emboldened. We are strengthened. We are encouraged. We are motivated to run. When we consider them with our passion and our patience and our purpose and our perspective, we see what they do, what they have done, and, and we're ready to run on and see what the end's going to be. But not only consider them, but we must consider us. Uh, multiple times, there's, there, there are so many pronouns about us in this 12th chapter in these first three verses. Since we are surrounded, yeah. let us throw off yeah. everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run the race that is marked out for us. Yeah. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Consider them, yes, but consider us. We've got to consider ourselves. And the sin that so easily entangles them. Those folk, they ran and they finished well. Now it's our turn. As we run, we must be aware of the pitfalls. Aware of the obstacles. Aware of the distractions. We must take off. We must lay aside all the ash and the trash. All the needless stuff. All the stuff that's hanging on. Years ago, I preached this time, leave your stuff behind. Leave that stuff back there. All that stuff that weighs us down and tangles us up. Kick it to the curb, I say. Get rid of it. Got an old boyfriend ain't acting right? Kick him to the curb and let the church roll on. Girlfriend don't love the Lord? Kick her. To the curb. Hanging out with all those knucklehead friends. Kick them to the curb. And let the church roll on. That's so easily. And consider us. Ourselves. Leave your neighbor alone. Look at yourself. Say Lord help me. It's me. It's me. It's me oh Lord. Standing. In the need of prayer. 
Not my sister, not my brother, not my neighbor, oh Lord, but it's me. Yes, sir. Jacked up. Messed up. Toe up from the floor up. Me, me, me. Help me, Lord. Consider them, yes, but consider us. That we might lay aside. Take off. Passion and patience and purpose. And perspective. We consider them and we consider ourselves. But lastly, most importantly, we must consider Jesus. Yes, yes. This is the final place that we look. And I'm going to leave you alone because it's getting late in the evening. Uh, because Jesus is the final answer. Yes, sir. After you've said everything else, this is the last thing to say. Yeah. Jesus. We look to Jesus because he ran a perfect race. We look to Jesus because it was he who, for the joy that was set down before him, he endured the cross, the Bible says, despising the shame. Jesus is set down right now at the right hand of the throne of God. We look to Jesus because it was him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. We look to Jesus lest we be weary and faint in our minds. We look to Jesus because Jesus is the only one that can deliver us. We look to Jesus because Jesus is the only one that can turn us around, pull us up, straighten us out, put us on the right path to love him and love our neighbors. We look to Jesus. Look, 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 village. Look to Jesus. Maybe you've been distracted. Maybe you've been deterred, but look to Jesus. Yes, look to Jesus. Yes. With passion, yes. with patience, yes. with purpose, yes. with perspective, look to Jesus. Yes. Let me take my seat, but I better give you a fifth P. Passion, patience, purpose and perspective. If we can have that Pastor Cohen, yes, sir. I believe we'll be able to persevere. Yes, sir. I, I believe we'll be able to hold on. Yes. I believe we'll be able to hold out. Yes. I believe no matter what your friends say about you, you'll be able to go on anyway. Yes. I believe if your money runs low, God will supply yes. all of your needs according to his riches in heaven. I believe that even when your health fails, God will hold you up. Yes, sir. I believe when folks talk about you, God will be your shelter. God will be your friend. I believe that even in the end, he will meet you there. Why do I believe? Because one day uh, they strung him up. <laughs> they strung him high and stretched him wide. They thought they had him. They laid him in a barred tomb. But even after a few hours, after a few days, the Bible says he rose again with all power in his hand. And this Jesus, we can love and we can run with passion, with patience, with purpose, perspective, and we can persevere to the end. One day, he's going to call us home. Will you be ready? Will you be ready, village? Will you run until the very end? He'll meet us at the end line yeah. and say, come on home, my son. Come on home, my daughter. You fought a good fight. You've kept the faith. Ah, come now up to glory. There's a crown of righteousness that awaits you because I know that you've been running. And so I'm telling you today, village, run, run, run on anyway. No matter what others may say, run. No matter what your health may say, Run, no matter how much money you have. Run, run until you can't run no more. And then run, run to Jesus, run to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. So it really doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you'd better be running. 
God bless you and keep you is my plea. Amen.